So can you briefly introduce yourself, your role, and Cornish Metals? Uh, yes, sure. So my name is Fozi Hanano. I'm Chief Development Officer at uh, Cornish Metals. I've been with the company for, for about a year now, and my focus is on uh, corporate development, so you know, business development, uh, as well as the investor relations function at uh, the company. Now, Cornish Metals is a uh, an AIM and a TSXV listed company uh, with a focus on advancing its South Crofty uh, tin project, which is located in Cornwall, uh, United Kingdom. The South Crofty project uh, is a historical mine that had been operating for over 400 years since uh, 1592 until it closed in 1998 due to depressed uh, tin prices. However, since then, there have been several efforts by various uh, different owners to bring it back uh, into production. And uh, we've acquired the, the asset in 2016 out of an administration, and we've been kind of continuing on, uh, on that quest. And we've been making quite a lot of uh, important milestones over the last few years. And we continue to push forward towards a restart of production of uh, South Crofty in 2027. What are some of the key projects or strategic initiatives currently underway at Cornish Metals? So currently, our main focus is on South Crofty. Uh, so it is a uh, an underground uh, tin mine. It is one of the highest grade tin mines in the world and actually the highest that is not currently in production. Uh, it contains uh, upwards of 80,000 tons of, uh, of tin uh, based on our last um, uh, mineral resource statement. And we've recently completed a preliminary uh, economic assessment uh, in, uh, in May of this year which demonstrated the uh, uh, the uh, economic and technical strengths of uh, of this project, producing some uh, uh, some you know, strong uh, figures such as an after tax NPV of uh, just over two hundred million dollars and an IRR of thirty uh, percent. Uh, and uh, you know where we see this going is for this to provide an opportunity uh, for a local production of uh, of tin in in the UK and in Europe, where currently there is no. Uh, production, uh, mine production of tin in these regions or in North America. So it's very reliant on on imports from from Asia, particularly. And this is a critical metal. So this is quite a, an opportunity to have a better security of supply uh, of tin. Um, as an industry leader, what do you consider Cornish Metals' most impactful achievement, and how has it shaped your vision for the future? Well, like I mentioned, you know. There have been several owners who've tried to bring this mine back into production. You know, we are now making uh, quite a lot of progress over the last couple of years. You know, the Cornish Metals team has grown quite significantly from about 10 to three years ago to uh, around 80 currently. And activity levels have been increasing, and we continue to advance and de-risk the South Crofty project towards a plant start of production in 2027. So, you know, what have we achieved? You know, quite a lot of important milestones. Some of the most important uh, include the construction of the water treatment plant and uh, with dewatering currently underway, uh, as well as, like I mentioned, the publication of the PEA, which really validated the project's potential to be a long life and low cost underground mine. But I'll touch on one element here, which is quite important. And really, the, the social license to operate is something that's extremely important and cannot be ignored for, for any mining operation or prospective mining operation. And uh, we have you know, strong community support. And with the, you know, now that we are dewatering the mine and running uh, the, the water through the, uh, a, a water treatment plant, we are effectively cleaning the, uh, uh, the, the water and improving the quality of the water in the Red River. It's called the Red River for the main reason that you know, previously untreated mine water has been discharged into that, into the Red River, you know, carrying with it um, you know, you know, solids that, such as you know, iron, manganese, and various uh, others, such, uh, such as uh, arsenic as well. So since we started dewatering the, the mine, there has been a, an instant visual improvement to the quality of the water where you can now see it is crystal clear. And that is you know, quite an important uh, aspect of the way we operate and that we take community, the environment, uh, very, very important. Uh, and that does lead towards the support that we do see from, from the locals in Cornwall. What are the opportunities do you see in the market right now that could lead to future growth for your company? So tin, like I mentioned, is a critical metal. It is essential for, for modern life. Uh, if you have anything electronic, there is tin in it. Um, there, is a, there was a very large change in uh, tin's demand uh, and uses in early 2000s when the EU mandated a ban on the use of hazardous materials in electronic goods. So you saw demand for tin essentially doubling overnight. So currently, 50% of tin demand is used for solder, which goes into, into electronics. And so when you look at you know, what is really driving the growth for our company and for the, the sector as a whole, it's really you know, electrification 
uh, and a move towards uh, net zero. Uh, as you need tin in, you know, you're, you're going to have more electronics. Uh, and you, AI is another uh, uh, area as well. So when you talk about the growth in uh, in data centers um, and data processing, that needs significantly more more tin as well. But also in other applications such as in EV, you know, we see tin used in the anode of lithium ion or sodium ion batteries. Tin is also used quite uh, extensively in uh, in solar power. So you see how how tin is really quite. Are quite intertwined with this move towards uh, a, a green and uh, decarbonization of uh, of society, and you know, it is really growth in that aspect that's going to continue to to grow demand for for tin, and which is going to be beneficial for our company and our peers. And last question: What are the biggest challenges currently in the mining industry, and how is Cornish Metals addressing them? Well, there are quite a lot of challenges in, in the mining sector. Um, you know, one is perception, uh, clearly. Um, but you know, I'd say you know, more, more generally, you know, increasing capital intensity, uh, increasing timeline for development uh, from first discovery of uh, of a deposit all the way through to, to first production, declining ore grades, security of supplies. These are all issues that uh, that the the industry is facing. What uh, what's you know, differentiating for uh, for Cornish Metals is that you know this is a mine that's located in the UK, so it is a a stable uh, uh, jurisdiction. It's a uh, mine that has been in operation previously, so there's a long history of uh, uh, of operations and uh, and processing, and we have all that that data uh, and access to us. So it is a brownfield rather than greenfield, so that significantly de-risks it uh, from a technical perspective, and so capital intensity is lower than what you'd have from from greenfield uh, discovery, and also you know, this is you know one of the, the highest grade um, uh, deposits in the world. That too really helped. You know, you look at you know across several other commodities, you know, copper being one of them. A lot of the you know, top discoveries have been made, and a lot of the mines have been mined. Uh, historically, there are a few, you know, that you know, of course are still coming about. Like for example, in uh, in the DRC or Mongolia, with you know, significantly higher grades, but it comes with that added geopolitical risk. Uh, so here with uh, with uh, Cornish Metals as uh, South Crofty uh, mine, we we get that you know very high grade brownfield, low technical risk in a safe jurisdiction. And that will provide, when I talk about security of supply, you're currently close to two thirds of mine tin comes from Asia, mainly from few countries, China, Indonesia, and, and Myanmar. We've seen over the last couple of years, especially in Indonesia and Myanmar, where geopolitical risk has impacted the supply of, of tin from, from these countries. Um, and 80% of refined tin comes from from uh, from the from these countries, mainly, mainly being China. So having a mine in uh, in, in the UK, it provides you know, security of supply, you know, fine for a small amount. We're looking at probably 10% of European demand of tin, but it starts there and there'll be growth, uh, uh, growth uh, potential from there. So I think it really, you know, it really differentiates itself from you know, some, some of the challenges by really hitting on these aspects of you know, low capital intensity, high grade and, uh, and location. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this, um, you know, and uh, I hope to meet you at the conference. Thank you.